Hello beautiful people, it's Amanda here from Mystical Dragon. I just wanted to come to you with a short video as we are nearly at the Sabbath of Samhain and I wanted to just chat a little bit about a Wiccan ancestor altar. Now this is something that is often done around the Sabbath of Samhain but honestly can be done at any time of the year or even be something you have set up all through the year. Totally your choice. Uh, this is something you can do as a separate altar for yourself or you could do as part of your normal altar, part of your working altar, perhaps dedicate part of your altar to this or even the whole of your altar, the whole of your working altar uh, as an ancestor altar, particularly throughout Samhain. So there's really lots of options there. It doesn't have to be something that's particularly uh, separate. It can be any size altar, so it can be something that's really small because that's all you have the space for and that just works nicely for you. Or you can do something that is really quite big and sprawling. For me personally, I like to kind of combine it with um, my Samhain working altar. So uh, I kind of incorporate aspects of an ancestor altar into my altar. So obviously at Samhain, we really connect a lot with our deceased loved ones and we do a lot of things thinking about those that have passed, perhaps family and friends and those we've known that have passed. Uh, even things like tending grave sites and those sorts of things, setting an extra place at the table to honour them. Um, uh, and you can also, of course, do your ancestor older as part of that or as what you do to honour your ancestors instead. So what do we put on an ancestor altar? Well, it's really up to you what you want to put on your ancestor altar, how elaborate you want to go, um, and even, you know, how much you want to perhaps do some of the seasonal aspects of autumn and Samhain versus, you know, connecting with our ancestors as well. Obviously, the first thing that springs to mind will be photos of those people that we want to honour and connect with. So you might like to have... Um, uh, like I've done a frame that actually has a whole number of our relatives that is inside the frame that you can see beside me here. Uh, or you could have multiple, you know, photo frames that are set up across a table if you've got the space to, you know, have individual photos and individual photo frames up. So it's up to you if you want to kind of combine them in more like a mural type of thing or have individual ones uh, set up. You can also think about, have you been gifted anything from those people that you're wanting to remember and honour and connect with? If you have, you might like to have perhaps one of those items or a couple of those items uh, on your altar, displayed on your altar as well, perhaps with their photo. So that's also a way to connect with them. And honestly, you don't have to have any photos of them. You might like to just have some items that remind you of them instead. So once again, it's really personal choice. Or perhaps there might be items that they didn't necessarily gift to you, but certain things that remind you of them. So for instance, um, I think fondly of a grandmother that I have that has passed and she got me into cake decorating and, and all of that kind of, you know, baking and decorating side of things. So whenever I um, have cookie cutters or a rolling pin and those sorts of things, I'm often thinking of that particular grandmother. So I could put any of those items that connect on that level. Um, I could put one of those items on my altar to help with that connection and that remembering uh, of her. So anything that kind of reminds you of them and that doesn't have to be directly connected to them, but just be something that makes you think of them that works beautifully and that might even be coming down to things like a certain flower a certain fragrance um, you know anything like that definitely uh, would be well worth putting on your ancestor altar as well I love to have things like rose quartz hearts crystal hearts um, you know even statues of hearts because of course you know we're thinking of these relatives we're thinking of these people that have passed with fondness and with a lot of love. So anything that represents those loving connections would make a lot of sense to have on your ancestor altar. Something like an offering plate would also be ideal because it, it can be something that you do as part of your ancestor altar is to put out offerings to them. 
Now your offering plate can be a literal plate out of the kitchen or it could be a plate that you purposely go purchase to be that. It can be any size from really quite small to you know really a, like a dinner plate if that's what felt right and you had the space for. And then on that offering plate you can put things uh, as offerings uh, to your ancestors, to your loved ones. So it could be things that perhaps they particularly enjoyed. So some of the offerings that are quite common are like sweets, like candies, chocolate. Um, uh, you can have a glass of perhaps wine or a beverage that they really, you know, they really enjoyed. And it's like, you know, I'm putting this glass of red wine on my altar, thinking of you. It's like my way of cheers. Uh, for a particular aunt or whatever the, the case might be. So it can be any kind of food. Some people set their extra place at the table as being on their ancestor altar. So when you do your Samhain feast, your dinner, you might actually do up a plate of that food and set it on your altar. In those kind of situations, it's not there to be left for days on end. You would have it there while you're doing the dinner. The thinking behind that is that the, the spirits actually absorb the energy out of the food over your meal. Uh, and by the end of the evening, you actually can dispose of it in the compost bin or wherever is appropriate after that, because they've connected with it. They've absorbed that energy. You know, what you needed has taken place from that particular uh, offering plate. So that's the concept of an offering plate. Things like sweets and chocolates and things like that, you might decide to leave for a little bit longer. You can go a little bit intuitive on that, how long you want to leave such an offering uh, on your altar and what feels appropriate. And if you have issues with things like ants, then I would suggest making it perhaps only a, a few hours at best, just so that you don't end up with ants all over your altar, because that's definitely not a fun side um, of an offering plate if that ends up happening either. You can, of course, also add things like uh, perhaps an image of your family crest or there might be you are aware of a number of family crests from family history. If you've done some research into your family history, that might feel really appropriate and you might have uh, images of those that you could place somewhere on your ancestor altar or even hang up behind your ancestor altar if that feels appropriate. Uh, things like a skull is often put on an ancestor altar as well and skulls tend to represent things like our mortality and remembering and protection. Um, I like to work with crystal skulls if you're going to do something like that. Totally up to you though whether you don't like the idea of having a skull on your altar or whether you do appreciate that at Sarwen. For me it's only really at Sarwen that I work with a skull on my altar and that's in that remembering uh, side of things for Sarwen because very traditional skulls are connected to Sarwen. So, you know, go very what feels personally appropriate for you as well. Flowers are very much appropriate for Ancestor Altar and that totally will depend on what you're drawn to and what you feel is appropriate once again. Things like Hawthorne I love to have on my altar because that very much connects with the Sabbath of Sarwin. Um, also rosemary, because that is, of course, a herb of remembrance. Uh, so rosemary, uh, which I've got on my altar here as well. I've got some hawthorn and some rosemary in the vase that you can see and also scattered on my altar itself. So these can be really appropriate to Sarwin. But like I mentioned earlier, if there's particular loved ones that have passed and you feel there are certain flowers that perhaps connect specifically to them, then you know that would be really wonderful to have on your altar uh, and connect with them in that way as well. And of course, we need to have candles on an ancestor altar, which uh, is really lovely to be able to light a candle or light a couple of candles, thinking of those loved ones and lighting them in honor of those loved ones as well and, and in honor of that connection. So you can do that not only on Samhain itself, which is obviously very appropriate, but you could do it in the days leading up to Samhain. You could do it in the days after Samhain. You could decide you wanted to do it um, perhaps until the next moon cycle. Whatever really felt appropriate to you, you could decide you're going to light a candle every day or a couple of candles. You could light a candle specific for each individual that you're wanting to remember. So in those kind of cases, 
Um, I always find tea lights are really good for lighting them, you know, lighting a series of them for relatives and friends and loved ones that have passed like that. But you can certainly just light one as like, this is my ancestor candle and I'm lighting it in honour of all of them and my loving connections that I have with all of them. So you don't have to go too elaborate and especially if you don't have a lot of room, don't feel like you need to try and have lots of candles on your altar for that purpose. You can of course go outside of these things. This is really just a bit of a brainstorm letting you know these are some of the common things you will find on ancestor olders or might be inspired to put on your ancestor older but it is really totally up to you. There might be certain divinities that you feel called that are particularly connected with the, um, with death, uh, such as the god Anubis, who is Egyptian, that you might feel it's appropriate to have a representation of him perhaps on your altar. So really know that the sky is the limit. It is totally up to you and what you're feeling guided. Go with the colours you're feeling guided. Mine is usually in Samhain colours. I more get called to those because of the season. But, you know, if you felt that black was the most appropriate or even white felt the most appropriate, whatever you feel, you know, kind of go with that and honour that uh, and you will never get it wrong. There is no absolute this is the way that it needs to be. So uh, wishing you a really beautiful Sarwin. Uh, I know for us here in Australia this year it is coming up this Sunday, April the 30th. So wishing you a really beautiful Sarwin. Uh, I hope you have an amazing time and can feel those energies with the veils thin of your relatives, your loved ones coming in nice and close, bringing all their love for you and to you. Uh, and I wish you all the very best and look forward to seeing you again soon.